yet. <laughs> we, uh, we only travelled an hour yesterday in the car. Down's one of the Vertican, it's not that far. And I found myself saying, are we there yet? Because our little girl, Chloe, has found her singing voice. Oh, yes, she has. And she just sings constantly. And if she's not singing, she's humming. <laughs> oh, all day. And in the car, it's like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Sometimes we feel like that in our Christian walk, though. Hey, are we there yet? Um, and it feels like, you know, I look back on some of the bigger challenges that I've been through and some of the bigger trials that I've been through and I've come through them and I'm like, I totally got this until you turn the corner and you're like, oh dear, are we there yet, God? Um, and I want to speak this morning about part of the journey of the Christian walk, and that's the journey of sanctification. So if, if, you're, if you're here today and you're, you've given your life to Jesus, like he is your Lord and he is your Savior, then you are on a journey and that is a journey of sanctification. And so this morning, I just want to take a moment to just have a little bit of a look at what that actually means. But I thought to do that, to look at what sanctification means, we kind of got to take like a broad picture to start with, um, to, to see exactly where it fits. Because I think if I just go straight to sanctification, then it could look a little bit like I'm, I'm preaching works and I'm preaching you've got to earn your salvation. And that's absolutely not true. So the very core of our belief um, is the gospel story. The gospel story is why we are here today. Um, and so I think we've got like just, I've broken it down into like five brief points, if you've got those there. So number one, God created the world, right? Created the heavens and the earth. He spoke them into being. Um, and he created the world that we would rule the world with God and be in relationship with God. Second part of the story is that man rebelled against God. We were like, you know, wait, like God, this is cool and all, but we think we've got a better plan. We've got a better idea. We think we should do this instead. Um, and so because of that, um, our relationship with God and the world suffered. Um, so Jesus, because God so loved the world, he gave his only son, Jesus, and he became our substitute um, in so that man could be reconciled with God, right? So we could our relationship with God could be restored. And the last part of the gospel story is that God will restore the whole world. That it's promises in the Bible that Jesus will return and he will um, make a new heaven and a new earth and he will completely eradicate sin and darkness from the earth. So God created the world. Are we there yet? Yes, we're there. Man rebelled against God, had a better plan. Well, we thought we did. Are we there yet? Yeah. Jesus became our substitute. Are we there yet? Yeah. Man is reconciled with God. Are we there yet? Yeah. You and I, we're there yet. But God will restore, the, Jesus will come back and restore the whole world, eradicate sin, eradicate darkness. Are we there yet? No, we're not there. So we find ourselves here. <laughs> and while we're in that process, while we're in that part, it's this part of called sanctification. Um, and so... I've heard it put like this, we have been saved. And I think everyone here agrees with that. We have been saved. Through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we've been saved. Um, but there's also an element to this that we are still being saved in that we still walk in a fallen world. And we still, you know, the devil is, pr um, roar what is it, prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. There's still temptation. So we still need the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, and then there's also an element that we will be saved as in the final, the final part is yet to come okay so in the scholarly terms for that is three points justification sanctification and glorification all right I'm not going to go deep into this because I don't want to I don't want to do like a big lecture here but I'm just trying to paint the picture of where we sit in the story so justification's already happened and that word simply means it's just as if I've never sinned the penalty has been paid. I am saved. The Bible is very clear that when God looks at me, he sees the righteousness of God in Christ. I am justified. And that cannot be taken away from us, okay? So you need to understand, church, we are justified. Just as if we have never sinned. That the price has been paid, okay? 
That's what we are. So if you were, you know, in, go to a courtroom and there's all this evidence against you, you walk free because the penalty has been paid because Jesus literally took it upon himself. So he became me so I could become him. I am the righteousness of God. It is just as if I've never sinned. And then the third point is that's glorification. And that's when Jesus returns and he restores the heavens and the earth. And, and that's when it's, oh, thank you. The Bible says that we'll be given like new eternal bodies and, you know, that won't have sickness and won't decay. And um, so that's, that's the future. But right now we are in this process of sanctification. Um, and I think one of the best pictures to get our heads around sanctification is the Israelites. So when they were in bondage, in slavery, um, for 40 years in Egypt and, um, and they uh, finally, the deliverer came and they were freed from there and they wandered the desert for 40 years, probably often asking, are we there yet? Now, the, the fact is they were free. They were free. The power of the oppressor was broken. It's as if, you know, they were justified. They were free, but they still had the mentality of a slave. They were no longer slaves, but they still thought like a slave and they still acted like a slave. And so it's like this journey through the desert was like this process or this journey of them learning how to become children of God. Learning how, how do you act, how do you, how do you think when you're a child of God. And that's a little bit like us. We are free. We are saved. Jesus, he did that. Pastor Darren preached it this morning. He, he disarmed the principalities of darkness. And so we are free, but a little bit like the children um, wandering in the desert to the promised land, sometimes we still think the same way that we used to think, you know, back in slavery. Sometimes we still act the way that we used to act back in slavery, but that's not who we are anymore. And so the, the journey of sanctification is learning how to become children of God or not how to become we already are but how to act like children of God how to live like children of God how to live in the freedom that Jesus purchased us and gave for us um, so my heart today is that we would embrace the journey that we would embrace the journey of sanctification um, and that we would we would even have a heart that says hey God Come and show me. Come and show me what I need to change. Come and show me what I need to, you know, remove from my life. And because, and we'll look at a little bit too at how God does that, um, because we can't do that on our own. We need the Holy Spirit to do that. So have a, let's have a quick look at what sanctification is. And point number one is that it is a process. So there's Philippians one verse six, and it says that I am confident. Of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I think we get disheartened and we get down on ourselves because we can see what's not quite right in ourselves and we're disappointed that we're not perfect yet. Okay, we are justified, we are free, but I think sometimes you look at ourselves and we go, but I've still got this and I've still got that. And I want to let you know it's a process. Okay, It's a process. And when you, you sort of work through something, chances are something else is going gonna, is gonna to come up. And you might think, but why am I still facing this issue? Or why am I still coming up against this? The journey of sanctification is a process. And the, the word of God tells us that I'm confident of this, that he began a good work in us and he is going to bring it through to completion. He is going to bring it through to completion. It's a journey. Second thing that sanctification is, is it's purification. I think it's actually a very similar word to the Old Testament word of holiness. Um, so being cleansed, so um, like there's a scriptures, heaps of scriptures, but 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So I think one of the best examples of this is um, probably Jesus when he washed the disciples' feet. 
So it was at the Passover, um, and they were, you know, having their, their meal together, and Jesus um, began to wash their feet. Um, and if you remember, I won't go through it all now, but if you remember, um, Peter said, you can't wash my feet, Jesus. And he was like, no, I need to wash your feet. Um, and he's, you know, or, or you'll... Um, I can't remember the exact wording, but he said, wash all of me, Jesus. If you need to wash my feet, then wash all of me. And Jesus said, no, you're already clean. Like you're all, someone who's already bathed doesn't have to bath again. I just need to wash your feet. And it's a representation of just um, how we live in this world. And we are already clean. You are already clean, but walking around, you know, the world that has um, sin in it and temptation and, and, you know, different things in it, we pick up different things sometimes that don't belong to children of God, that don't belong to the kingdom of God. And so it's a picture of you are already clean. I'm just going to wash your feet. Um, And I think that, you know, I think of that picture and I'm like, you know, I think I would have been the same going, no, Jesus, no, you can't do that. Like, you can't wash my feet. You know, like, this is Jesus that we're talking about. Um, but I think we all have to come to that place of, of allowing Jesus to see the, the unpleasantness, see the, the things that were like, okay, I know that this shouldn't be there. Hey, Jesus, will you help me wash it? Um, Oh, I'm over here, sorry. Um, so, so, yeah, I think we need to posture ourselves in a place for Jesus to, to give him permission to wash our feet. So you, and remember, you are already clean, but we pick up dust as we go around the world. Um, you know, and I think, of, I think of this and I think how much easier the process of sanctification is when we give ourselves to it. I was picturing... Um, um, my son William I was reading this story about washing the disciples' feet, and my son William, when I cut his toenails, and Tim has experienced this recently, he's like a super sensitive kid, and he's like super ticklish, and like just the tiniest little thing on his foot is like, ah! and so to try and cut the child's toenails is like, I feel like warning the neighbours, like, okay, guys, tonight, all that's happening in our house is we're just cutting our our son's toenails because he screams the house down and he falls to the ground dramatically and rolls around, ah, it hurts, ah, and Tim experienced this the other night and he was like, whoa, Um, (laughs) um, and it's like, and Sometimes I can distract him. Sometimes, hey, I'm going to do this. Hey, you should watch this cool, funny video on my phone or you should tell me about this. And I can just like, do, 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 done. And, and it's, um, it's when he gives himself to the process, it's a much smoother process, right? But when we sort of resist, no, you can't do it. No, don't take it. Ah! Then it just becomes this massive thing that it doesn't need to be. Um, so I think that the because the... The sanctification is a work of the Holy Spirit. It's a work of the Word of God. Sanctify all these different things that you know brings sanctification. But there's also a part of us that has to um, give ourselves to that process and allow that process to happen. Because um, there's a scripture that says, "Sanctify yourselves," and I don't think it means that we on ourselves can sanctify ourselves, but it means we have a part to play in this process um, of allowing it to happen. Um, Keep looking at the, the <laughs> looking ahead. So, um, the gospel. I want to read this really cool thing that I read a little while ago. The gospel means that I am not all that awesome, but I am loved, and that's awesome. The gospel. The gospel frees me to be honest about the ways I fall short instead of being crushed by them, because it reminds me that Jesus was crushed for me. The gospel means that I don't have to hide. Because the good news of what the holy and the all-knowing Saviour did on the cross is true for me too. The gospel means I don't need to impress because Christ has eternally secured for me the smile of my maker. The gospel is good news because I just need to be me. And I'm allowed to admit that sometimes I struggle. I'm allowed to admit that sometimes I fail. I'm allowed to admit that sometimes I struggle. And that's okay, because Jesus already paid the price of that. 
but I need to give myself to the process of sanctification. Um, the lady that we were talking about earlier who just brought her friend to church, and she's, she's just come so far in probably the last six months. Um, and, you know, one of the home groups, um, she, she's just... And I think part of the reason that she's come so far, because I've seen this lady, even just in the short time we've been there, come to church, leave, come to church, leave, you know, sort of... But this time, I'm like, what's different this time that she's staying and she's so strong this time and I think the difference is she's given herself to the process of sanctification um, she's you know coming to a home group and she'll say hey I need prayer you know and and one one week recently she said I need prayer for my anger like I just I lose my cool big time um, she's like will you pray and I think that's like hey can you wash my feet hey I'm dirty hey I've got I'm justified but I'm struggling and I think as Christians, we've got to be able to do that. We've got to be able to say, hey, I know I'm saved. I know God loves me. I know I'm justified, but I'm struggling with this. Can you wash my feet? And because Jesus actually said that we are to wash one another's feet. We are to help one another through these struggles and through these things. And so this lady said, I have a serious anger problem. Will you pray for me? And so, you know, having the group pray for her, God, be her strength, help her to stay calm in these situations. And the next morning she called me up and she's like guess what I had my first trial um she said she said usually she, I, I, and I'm like I'm trying to picture what it must look like when she loses her cool because she's like they the family had to tell me something that they knew I was going to lose my cool one guy went out the front yard because he didn't want to be in the house the other kids are hiding in their bedroom and she said her husband broke the news to her and she said I felt it rising up in me but she said nope that's not who I am anymore and she said, okay, that's fine. That's fine. And she said, the kids started coming out the bedroom going, is everything, have you told mum yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy out the front yard, what, you already told her? What? Oh, and she's like, no. She's like, that's not me anymore. That's who I used to be. That's not me anymore. And she's like, and the church are praying for me that I'll work on this. And that's the process of sanctification. But it's embracing the process of sanctification. It's saying, I know that I am loved by God. I know that I'm forgiven. That has to be our foundation, okay? That has to be the foundation that we work from. But I've got some dust on my feet that I know doesn't bring glory to God. Can you help me? Can you help me wash it off? We see the same thing in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, um, when um, you, most of you will know the story, when Daniel was tempted, there was all the king's delicacies on the table, all the finest wines from the kingdom. And he decided, in fact, I think the scripture specifically says in Daniel 1 verse 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart. And I think, church, that we have to get this purpose in our heart and go, I will not. So when we know that there's a temptation, when we know that there's something that we struggle with, that we get a resolve in our heart that says, I am not going to be that person anymore. And we do whatever we have to do to ensure that we can, we can like this lady, I'm seeing her changing her friendships, you know, changing different things that she does. Um, it's removing herself from that, from that opportunity. Um, to fall back into temptation. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. It would have been an intentional and a daily choice um, that he made to not partake of the things of the, of the, of the kingdom um, because he knew that he was of a different kingdom. So then in Daniel 1 verse 10, it says, and at the end of the 10 days, because they did this for 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Verse 17 then says, and as for these four young men, there were three others with Daniel, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep going with that. By the way, I'm up to point number three. That's being set apart and different. I keep trying to get here <laughs> sooner. So this is part of the sanctif sanctification process is being set apart. It's being different. Um, and in verse 20, 
So we see that Daniel set himself apart. He purposed in his heart that I am going to be different. I'm not going to partake of things of that kingdom anymore. I'm of a different kingdom. And in verse 20, it says, In all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them. So when the king sought their advice, their wisdom and their knowledge and their understanding, he found them to be ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in his realm. So that's what sanctification does. When we choose to be purified, you know, when we choose to embrace this process, when we choose to be set apart and we choose to be different to the world, it says they were 10 times better Because God gave them this supernatural understanding. God gave them this supernatural um, wisdom. And they were ten times better. And I wonder, like these were just young men. These were just young men. And the king had like his choice of like these um, magicians and astrologers who would have studied and studied and studied for years and years and years, you know, and mature in age and and advanced. Like when you look at it, you go, of course, these guys are the more advanced one. But these young guys come along and they they were in the process of I will be sanctified, that I will be set apart from the world. I will follow God in his ways and not the world's ways. And the Bible says they were 10 times better in wisdom and in understanding and interpreting dreams. And I wonder is if when we give ourselves to um, the process of sanctification, if it increases the supernatural in our life. It increases the supernatural things to happen because we're being set apart. And so being set apart is being unique, it's being different, it's being holy, and it means that we're not under the power of sin. So there's a scripture in um, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, and it says that you are a chosen generation, you are a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvellous light. So a chosen people, chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy holy nation. So saying you are different. You are, when you go to another country, people look different. People eat different. People live different. They have different, they speak different. And he's saying you are a holy nation. You are a set apart people. It's okay to be different. In fact, you're meant to be different. Um, And when you live in a different country, you live under a different ruler. You live under a different government. And so when we are people of the kingdom of God, then we are no longer under the power of of sin. We are no longer under the power of the kingdom of darkness. We now belong to the kingdom of God and he broke that power. And so when we give ourselves to the process of sanctification, when we choose to be set apart, when we choose to only partake of the things that we know God says that we can have, it sets us apart and it sets us apart from the power of sin as well, from the power of addiction, from the power of those things that have, you know, for years and years and years in our own strength, we try and battle them but this process of sanctification is saying no we're set apart we're different to that where we live under the ruling and the government of Jesus and his lordship and he frees us from that he makes us able to be free from that that's the difference that's that's and that's the difference that I see in this lady in our church at the moment is she came she'd come and she'd she'd come to church but there was not this selling out to okay God I give it all I give it all But this time she's like, whatever it takes. This time she's like, you know, I'm at church. I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm learning, you know, um, I think um, she called me one day. She said, every morning I wake up and I write out a scripture. And she's like, I can't read. So I don't actually understand what I'm writing. But she said, this morning I understood every word. You know, this, so she's learning to read by just doing, writing out a scripture a day. Like that's giving yourself going, God, I don't even know how to read. I don't even know what this all means, but you say to do it. So I'm going to do it. But you say to do it. So I'm going to do it. And the difference that it makes in our life. And it, it, it then the world sees that sees the difference, like the king in, in Daniel he saw the difference that it made. This lady that come to church on Sunday is because she saw her friend on the side of the road and said, you're different, you're different, and I want what you have. We sung that song before that said, come like a fire. You know, that fire will rest on us, and it's a consuming fire. That, 
that sanctifies us, that purifies us. So we're different. We're different to the world. We're a set-apart people. We're a chosen nation. And I just, I don't know, I just got this, I got this word sanctification. I'm like, oh, I don't even know how to explain it properly. Like, so I've been doing this study, but I've just got this passion inside of me to, to be a sanctified people, to be a people set apart for God, to be a people that acknowledge when we're struggling, that acknowledge that, hey, I got dust on my feet. Can you help me? We all just want to go in the bathroom by ourselves and get rid of it and don't show anyone. But Jesus says, no, do this with one another. There's power in this. But sanctification doesn't just bing, done, done, done. It's a process that we give ourselves to. It's a process where we partner with God. And I don't have time this morning to go through it all, but yourself, you can do a search on all the scriptures of sanctification or or words like transformation or holiness. Look those things up and see, well, how does this process happen? Well, it happens with the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a scripture that talks about the word of God sanctifies us. So it's learning to read his word. It's hearing his word. It's learning to read it. And if you don't know how to read, that's okay. Read anyway (laughs) or get a friend with you sanctification when we go through trials when we go through battles and we think and we have to learn to put our trust in God and we have to learn to not respond the way that we used to respond it's all part of the journey of sanctification and then the last point that I have oh hold on one other thing that sanctification means it means that you have no other purpose so you look in the Old Testament, if something was sanctified for the temple or for the, for the use of God, it could have no other purpose but to be used for that. So for us to be sanctified, and part of that is to be set apart, it means we have no other purpose than glorifying God, which means we can't come to church on a Sunday and sing about how wonderful he is and then go home and bring people down with our words. We're a set apart people. We have no other purpose than to bring glory to God. And it means my whole being, my whole being. I can't serve God one day a week and live the way I want the rest of the week. You know, I can't can't say all the right things with my mouth but then be thinking something differently in my mind. No, I'm a sanctified person. I'm set apart. I have no other purpose but to bring God glory. Okay, I'm going to end with this final scripture. Sanctification, last point, is it makes us into the image of Christ. So there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, and it says, For we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed. That's this process. We are being transformed into the same image. So we are being transformed into the same image of the Lord from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. It's this process, it's making us like Jesus. You know, and in one sense we already are because we're justified, but this is this process of this cleansing and this being set apart that the world would see the glory of God in our lives that the world would see that we are different and go, I want what you've got. And we can say, you can have it. You can have it. You can have it this very moment. So I want to encourage you to embrace sanctification, to remember that it is a journey. It is a process. That it means being purified and it means being cleansed and it means allowing God. It's so much easier when we go, okay, God, I'm with you on this. Show me what I need to do. Show me how to work on this. It means being set apart, unique, different, holy. And that also means then that we are no longer under the power of sin. We are no longer under the power of the kingdom of darkness because we are set apart. And to be set apart means we have no other purpose than to bring glory to God. And it brings us into the image of God. It says, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? What God wants to do for us? What he has done for us? 
And we are being transformed into the same image. Isn't that incredible? From glory to glory. All right, let's pray. God, we just take this moment. Take this moment, God, to just say, Holy Spirit, come and do what you need to do in our lives. God, we're not just waiting for Jesus to return. We're not just biding our time until you return to the earth, but we have purpose right here and right now. And God, we want to partner with you for the work that you want to do on this earth. And Holy Spirit, we just give you permission to sanctify us. We open ourselves up, God, to this journey. Saying, God, we want to be a set-apart people. We choose to be different. God, teach us what it is to live as children of God. God, show us the things that we need to let go of because they're from the past. Because that's from who we used to be. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So God, teach us how to walk in this newness of life. And we give you permission, Holy Spirit, to show us areas in our life that need to go. To show us areas in our life that needed just a bit of a washing. Because you are transforming us into your image. And we choose to be a set apart people. A people who have no other purpose than to bring honour and glory to your name. And what a privilege it is to live the rest of our days on this earth bringing honour and glory to you in the way that we live our lives, in the way that we interact with people around about us. God, in the way that we manage our family and, and the way that we work in our workplaces. God, teach us what it is to live as children of God here on this earth even though sin is still present, even though temptation is still present, God, even though the, the, you know, the powers of darkness are, are still at work for people who don't know you yet, God, teach us, God, to be a set-apart people, that we would bring honour and glory to your name, that the world would look and they would know that we belong to Jesus and they would desire the same thing for themselves. So, God, I just ask your blessing, God, to be upon every person here. Your blessing over every family that's represented here. You are such a good God. And I thank you that as we leave this building, God, you leave with us. You walk with us every step of every day. You are always with us. And I thank you that we can take that assurity with us as we go, that you are with us. You are our helper. You are our comfort. You are our enabler. That we are never alone. All right, amen.